You may have heard of the Picts as wild-haired savages who fought half-naked and painted themselves blue. Reports of these barbaric people were common in Roman descriptions of them, and it's certainly true that Hollywood loves the image of a scantily clad warrior covered in blue paint. But how much of this is historically accurate, and how much is a result of Roman propaganda? In this video, we will explore what we know about the ancient Celtic nation known as the Picts. The term Pict was first coined in the late 3rd century by the ancient Romans. They used the word Picti, meaning painted people, to describe the native Britons during the Roman occupation of Britain. However, the term was not in use when the Romans first arrived in Britain in 43 CE. When Ptolemy created his geographical description of the Roman Empire, he named many Celtic tribes, including the Caledoni, Demani, and Cornavi tribes in the north. But there was no mention of the Picts. It is thought that the Romans used the term painted people as the Picts either practiced tattooing or body painting. However, how they achieved this look is unclear. According to Gaius Julius Caesar, all Britons dyed themselves a bluish color to give themselves a wild appearance in battle. However, since Caesar did not venture past Southeast Britain, his testimony cannot account for the Picts of the North. Furthermore, his trip to Britain came about 300 years before the first mention of the Picts. It has been a long-standing myth that the Picts dyed themselves with woad, a yellow-flowered European plant from the cabbage family, although all modern attempts to recreate this practice have failed. While woad was popular for dyeing fabric, as a body paint, the woad simply flakes off, and when used as tattoo ink, it is highly acidic and results in a lot of scar tissue that is distinctly lacking in blue color. Tattoos have been historically used for adornment and medicinal purposes, with charcoal rubbed into small incisions made on acupressure points, and the practice has been found on bodies all over the world. It is a distinct possibility that the Picts did tattoo themselves. Still, it may be that the description of the painted people came from Caesar's initial reports and not from observation. As the Romans felt tattoos were barbarous, labeling the native Britons as painted may have been a way to defame them. It is conceivable that the term Pict was initially used as a derogatory term to demonize and otherize the British natives, and was later reappropriated by the locals who added origin myths and a sense of identity to the once flippant term. As with many other Celtic groups, the Picts left very little written history, meaning that what we know about them comes from what other people wrote about them. As to how the Picts viewed themselves, we do not know. The difficulty when identifying the Picts comes from the fact that there doesn't appear to be any people who identified themselves as Picts prior to the Roman reference. There is a similar issue with the Celts in a broader sense, as Celtae was used as a blanket term for the group of European tribes despite them all having individual identities and tribe names. However, we do know that at least some of these tribes actually identified themselves as Celts. It used to be believed that the Picti were the original Britons, and they were pushed into the Celtic strongholds of Cornwall, Wales, and Scotland by the Romans. However, we now know that there were many Celtic tribes, and we currently use the word Pict to refer to a Celtic group that lived in what is now known as Scotland. The group of people that modern scholars refer to as Picts are best known for their distinctive symbols that can be found carved in stones across Scotland. It is currently thought that the people we identify as Picts flourished in Scotland from around 300 to 900 CE. The remains of their settlements are identified by the distinctive Pictish carvings, which are usually of animals or abstract symbols. They are believed to denote personal names and may have been used as grave markers in some cases. Using these stones, we know that the Picts occupied extensive territory in eastern and northern Scotland, including the Orkney and Shetland Isles, as well as the Outer Hebrides. An incredible example of Pictish sculptures can be seen on the Orkney Archipelago at Noah Burien, which shows some classic Pictish symbols like the mirror, crescent, and V-rod. Moray is also the site of many symbol stones, including Sueno's stone and forest. This stone is a massive 21 feet tall and weighs over 7 tons. On one side is an enormous Christian cross, showing the growing Christian influence in the area. On the other is a carving of warriors and a pile of decapitated heads. It was once thought to depict a Scottish victory over Sven Forkbeard, who was king of Denmark, England, and Norway in the late 900s and early 1000s. However, the carving is now thought to be older 
and may have been made in the 800s toward the end of the Pictish era. One theory is that it was erected by King Kenneth MacAlpine, who united the Dalriadan Scots and the Picts through bloody battles. One of the largest Pictish forts found to date is at Burghead in Moray on the northeast coast of Scotland. The site originally spanned over 12 acres and had 8-meter-thick walls that jutted out to sea. Originally, the ramparts were made using an oak framework filled with rubble. Archaeological evidence shows that the Picts were far from the barbaric, half-naked savages that the Romans described and had a pretty sophisticated society. Settlement sites have been found with evidence of metalworking, and their strategic warfare even bested the organized Romans at times. The lifestyle of the Picts was primarily based on agriculture, and there is evidence that they grew barley and oats. Plow pebbles have also been found at Pictish settlements, meaning they were involved in pretty intensive agriculture and had access to advanced technology. Animals also played an essential part in Pictish culture, as evidenced by many stone carvings. There is also some indication that the Picts were part of an extensive trade network, as excavations at the village of Rhiney in Aberdeenshire have uncovered evidence that Pictish nobles drank wine from the Mediterranean out of French glassbreakers. The site also yielded proof of fine metallurgy and produced brooches and pins made from precious metals. In the movie Braveheart, you may have noticed William Wallace's warriors wore blue face paint. This was likely lifted from the Pict culture, though there is no evidence proving the Picts actually donned body paint. Over the years, there have been many assumptions about what the Picts looked like, and most of them show them to be wild, half-naked, and painted blue. These images certainly fit with the Roman description of the native people, but we do also have Pictish representations of themselves in stone carvings and sculptures. One carving on the Hilton of Cadbull Cross Slab shows figures on horseback, including a female with long hair, riding side saddle, and wearing a cloak that is fastened by a large brooch. In Aberdeenshire, a six-foot-high Pictish carving shows a man carrying an axe and wearing a headdress. It is believed that he may be linked to animal sacrifice or Pictish royalty. In 2017, a Pictish carving was found during a roadworks project that appears to depict a man holding a spear and wearing a cloak and shoes. The figure has a distinctive hairstyle that is shaved in the front. Another depiction of a Pictish man, known as the Bullion Pictish Stone, shows a bald and bearded figure riding a horse and drinking from a horn. As well as historical illustrations, we also have evidence of the physiology of the Picts. Remains of a man from the Pictish era were found in Rosemarkey Cave, and a team headed by Dame Sue Black worked on a facial reconstruction of the man. It was once speculated that this robust-looking man was actually a Viking, but an isotope analysis of the man's teeth revealed he was born and raised in the area. We also know that, like the rest of the Celtic nations, the Picts did take care of their appearance, as mirrors and combs are a common theme of Pictish symbol stones. There are many myths surrounding the Picts. One is that their society began with a king called Crinia. King Crinia ruled Pictland, now Scotland, for 100 years before splitting his kingdom between his seven sons, Cort, Kay, Sirig, Fib, Fiddick, Fotla, and Fortran. Supposedly, the sons' names can still be found in several Scottish regions today, such as Fib becoming Fife and Cort becoming Caithness. However, the location of the biggest area, known as Fortrio, is still up for debate. Once thought to be located in Strathern, it is now believed to be in the Moray area due to the large fort at Burghead. Another origin story claims that the Picts sailed to Scotland from ancient Scythia and regions where ancient Greek historian Herodotus described painted people living. However, it is now thought that this was a myth that originated with the Picts, who may have wanted to link their society with the classical world, as was the trend for kingdoms in the Middle Ages. Historians believe that the nobility sought to validate their claims to rule by presenting an origin myth that legitimized their leadership. However, the most likely origin of the Picts is that they were the descendants of the Caledones or Vacamagi, who were Celtic tribes living in Scotland during the Iron Age, an early Roman occupation of the area. We do not know when and how the Pictish kingdom came to an end, but there is a note in a medieval Irish chronology that contains a reference to the last person to be dubbed Rex Pictorum, or King of the Picts. According to the Annals of Ulster, King Ed was assassinated in 878 CE by members of his own household, not the most noble end for such a majestically mythical people. 
the most likely reason the Pictish kingdom was destabilized was foreign invaders. After surviving hundreds of years of Roman rule, the Picts became Christianized, as evidenced by the increasing number of stones bearing carvings of the cross and archaeological sites that have been identified as Pictish monasteries. One such monastery was found at Port Mahomek, and in the remains, Pictish sculptures and cross slabs were discovered to have been broken and smashed. The new invaders came from the east in the form of Viking raiders. In around 860 CE, there were major Viking settlements across Scotland, and in 900 CE, the inhabitants of Scotland were no longer ruled by those who were identified as Picts. Instead, the new kingdom was known as Alba, the forerunner of what we now call Scotland. The nobility traced their lineage back to Ireland rather than Pictland. While modern archaeology has uncovered a great deal about the Picts and their lifestyle, there is still much more to be discovered. Ongoing projects hope to piece together more about these enigmatic people and the hopes to further separate fact from Roman fiction. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about the pics, check out our book, Celts, a captivating guide to ancient Celtic history and mythology, including their battle against the Roman Republic in the Gaelic Wars. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.